Welcome to an enlightened hour of interactive talk. This is Guided Spirit Conversations with host Marla Goldberg. In this program, we spotlight guests from all over the globe who have helped others change their lives and will provide you with the tips, tools, and techniques that you need to help you make a difference in your own life. Now, here is Marla Goldberg. Hello, everyone. How are you doing today? Well, it's Thursday, and you know, if it's Thursday, it's Guided Spirit Conversations podcast day. Well, I had a beautiful show planned for you, um, but my guest seems to be a no-show. So I hope you will bear with me, you'll participate with me, and we're just going to go with the flow of the show wherever it goes. Um, I know that I've got some things that are on my mind that I've been writing about and talking about, and... So I guess I'll talk a little bit about it here. If there's something you'd like to talk about, please feel free to call in at 888-346-9141. Again, 888-346-9141. So it's Memorial Day weekend. I hope you are planning a wonderful weekend and I hope it's gonna be safe and, but yet fun and full of activities. The masks are lifting. Um, I did some traveling and it was, very interesting to see the slow transition of people removing their masks and feeling very much like 2019 in the way of our freedoms. And it was, um, and it made me start thinking about what's been going on recently. And I'm not a political person, and this is not a political conversation, but for the past year and a half, when this whole thing started and everybody got locked down, all I kept thinking and praying about was about, well, not all, but heavily, is how this is such a great opportunity for us to pull back, recalibrate ourselves, and to start a new normal when we come out of our hibernation. Give us time to get introspective, reflect about ourselves, our lives, how we live our lives. And I'm not criticizing or judging anybody's choices. Um, but what I've done over the past year and a half is, you know, like many, I get caught up in the news. And I tried to watch it in a very neutral state. And what was really interesting is what's going on outside in the world. Um, Instead of this, this COVID, this pandemic, letting people know that we need each other, teaching us we need each other, we need to support each other, we need to be there for each other. You know, it takes a village and it truly does. So it takes a neighborhood to support a neighborhood, to look after those who might be injured or sick and not be able to really do the things that they used to be able to do for themselves or their households or their yards or anything else. And my hopes and prayers in this past year and a half with it when we came out of this, that maybe, maybe we could come out being a warmer, gentler, more accepting kind of people. But from what is being shown, and I know news is rhetoric, and I know that news is very tainted because they only show you what they want to show you but it's like they want to poke the bear, pet the snake, whatever cliche you want, um, and bring people to fear, to be afraid, to be afraid of other people, to be afraid of other ethnicities, to be afraid of um, what's going on out there. And in some cases, we have, we have every right to be, to be afraid because things are going a little crazy. And in my opinion, people are really thinking that they are able to just wipe people off the slate and just because they don't agree with them politically, they don't agree with the shots. I've had some fascinating conversations about the vaccinations. And if you'd like to talk about that, please feel free to call in at 888-346-9141, where people are getting their vaccinations and then some people are choosing not to. But more important than the choices 
is the reaction to the choices. So I had someone really get testy with me and tell me that I can't come over to their home if I'm not vaccinated, which doesn't make sense to me because in my mind, it shouldn't matter if I'm vaccinated or not, because if you're vaccinated, then the chances are, you know, you have the same chance of getting COVID whether I'm vaccinated or not. That's how I feel about it. It's me if I'm not vaccinated and I'm not even gonna get into what I am or I'm not, um, but it's up to me to take the chance or not take the chance by either taking the vaccination or not. Regardless of whichever way it comes, people are dropping people because of the fact that they've made a choice. And you know, I speak on the power of choice and choice is powerful, but reaction to choices is powerful and how we as beings, as humans, react to other people's choices. Look, at, I get if you don't like someone's behavior and it doesn't you know, flow with yours and it's toxic to you, that you step away from the behavior. But if it's a, the choice of a vaccination or not a vaccination, I, and, it, and if you're vaccinated and you're safe and the other person isn't, I think they're the ones who's taking the bigger chance. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, but really more importantly, I want to talk about the way it's done. And with such force in their voice, with such anger in their voice, or with such a feeling of um, righteousness that the, you know, because they've chosen to do something, they think you need to do it too. My feeling is, is that we could talk to each other, talk, we don't have to raise our voice. And we could say, I can agree to disagree with that point. And if that's your choice, okay, I can respect it. You don't want me to come in your house? I won't come in your house. You know, I mean, it's just, it's the same thing with what happened with the elections. If you didn't agree with the political party of your friend, that they're going to drop you. And I have to tell you, I lost a lot of people. And ironically enough, um, I didn't even talk about, you know, wh where I stood, whether I was a Republican, Democrat, independent. And I'm an independent. I want the best person for the job. I will say this out loud. I just want the best person for the job. And my best person didn't get in on any of these elections. But here's the thing, I'm not beating anyone up over it or yelling or screaming or disowning them as friends. You know, you have the right to your choices. But what's scaring me out there is people changing the truth of facts. You know, back in the day when I was growing up, people would be saying, um, People would be saying um, that there was no Holocaust. Well, I know there was a Holocaust. I have cousins who were in the Holocaust, whose families perished in the Holocaust. Um, and they're saying like the June, the January 6th insurrection didn't happen, but it did happen. And how many people were hurt, injured, and how many people died? I, I'm not understanding how people want to change the truth. It's not only, it's not even hearsay, it's documented on video. It's like, you can, numbers don't lie. People might lie about numbers, but numbers don't lie. Well, guess what? Unless you really do a hack job on editing a video, when you're doing something live, that doesn't lie either when it's live. They may... <clears throat> alter some of the videos so they're not as harsh, you know, soften them up a little bit. But what happened actually happened. And and what, what has happened since then is very, very disconcerting to me. It's very confusing to me. Um, I come from a place of acceptance, kindness, tolerance. I do have my boundaries where, you know, some things are I will not tolerate. 
but on a whole in the general, I'm a pretty bendy person <laughs> when it comes to tolerance. It takes a lot for me to get to the place to say, I'm done. I mean, it truly does get me to the to the end. Oh, well, I hope I didn't bore you, but Abriel is on and so he's here. Let me bring him on and then I'll tell you about him. Hang on one second. So as he's getting settled in, um, let me tell you about our guest today, Abriel Joseph. Abriel, like many lives, people in, you know, are living their life in pursuit of living the dream, the dream life with a dream job, with a dream way of being. And through his over 20 years of practicing and teaching yoga, Abriel has uses his practice as the foundation to healing, leading him to his other therapeutic practices, such as breathwork, meditation, and sound healing. Currently, Abriel hosts workshops and teacher training programs across the globe. And check out his TEDx talks on YouTube or on his website, pranaforceyoga.com. Welcome. How are you? I think you're muted. You're muted on your computer. There we go. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Thank you so <laughs> much for having me. I'm so glad you you came to came into the yeah, show. So. Absolutely. Thank you for your patience. I'm here in Maui, Hawaii, and uh, we are in a new location that's just getting our our connection really well in, in um, Hawaii right now. Love Maui. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Actually, it's so funny. I went up to the road to Hana with my husband. It took him about three okay. and a half hours to go up. It took me an hour and a half to come down. <laughs> so yes. I, I had some fun on those curves. Oh, wow. You were moving. <laughs> I, I was moving. He was Absolutely. like, oh, my God. It was like a movie. Yeah, you know, when, when you're, you know, the person in the passenger seat is like hanging off the edge. <laughs> anyway. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a beautiful trip. It's a, it's a beautiful, it's the road to Hana is beautiful. Maui is beautiful. And it's so beautiful to now finally meet you. So, you as well. Thank I'm you for so having beautiful. me. So let me ask, yeah. you started your yoga practice when you were what, about 16-ish? Yes, I was 16 at the time I was living in San Francisco Bay Area. My partner at the time, her parents owned a yoga studio and they invited me to come and share and practice. And from that point around the world, from teaching to um, taking workshops and learning more about just the lifestyle of yoga and feel that was really important at that time, um, being raised and trained in a sports background to to compete and to um, kind of break the body apart by playing sports that can really injure you as a man uh, and or a female and ended up um, bringing me to a lot of healing and and also allowing me to offer that and sharing with other people that's lovely so which is so unusual because back 20 some odd years i'm not even I don't know how far further back it goes, but men really weren't into yoga as much as women were, as that from my experience. Like you have your, I'm sorry, your 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 reception is coming in and out. Absolutely, in the nineties. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Or a delay. Okay. Here's a delay. In the nineties, yes. Um, I feel I was starting in the 90s and it was definitely a um, focus around the feminine because a lot of people didn't really know the yoga practices were, were originally more of a, in India, a, a male kind of competitive, almost sport and women would also compete. So it'd be very similar to Asian martial arts where different schools would have their styles of practice and then they would come together and compete and see who had the different or more kind of effective methods of of the arts of martial arts and um 
and was interesting because I didn't realize that martial arts were also really established in India and passed on to China and Japan and they evolved it into their um, thread of kind of Buddhist practices, which made sense because there was so much movement, so much healing in, in um, the physical from people that were maybe into the warrior lifestyle where they would have to figure out how to like set these bones after you know all this training of and and bruising and so on so it was a, a very male dominated uh, lifestyle and because of the western world of marketing and branding and how do we get this out there it be softened a lot as being something maybe not so physically demanding and maybe being soft and and the realization was um for me that yoga is not soft and it's not easy the people's bodies are are really tight <laughs> it's it's um it's the practice of the mind and integrating that with the body it's so true i love yoga i've been doing yoga on and off for a period of time i've just started my new love is aerial yoga and oh yeah that's awesome so i love i love doing it outside on my back deck even and just you know getting into it but yoga is hard holding those positions for the period of time is hard but for me when i'm done with it i feel so refreshed i feel like i've been through a meditation because of the breathing yeah. yes and yeah, the breath is really beautiful it's so important to the to mm -hmm. i mean obviously it's important to life but it's so important to holding your poses and and moving it's it's very tai chi in the sense of breathing in and breathing out and moving this way or that way according to the breath you're taking absolutely that's that's um, a nice point uh, that um the the feminine side of what what i interpret of yoga practice is more how well one can integrate their breath with movement which is a very fluid more feminine experience that maybe when I trained with with the heavy weights and and running into people playing American football. Um, that's not very, you know, it's more explosive. Yes. Um, more of a taking than it is a giving myself nourishment. Yeah. And so in, in yoga, and I know I'm, I'm starting with this, but this is where the foundation lies, correct? Yeah. And you're starting with for, the for my lifestyle. Absolutely, because it's the physical that really integrated me as a teenager. And that's the best way I find for masculine to integrate into any type of more softer practices, whether it's Tai Chi or a softer style of Hatha Yoga, where it's more breath and movement. You don't have to do anything in particular extravagant or extraordinary. It's more really just taking care of what people can do with what they have currently. And for the masculine, I feel that's a newer practice, but it's more um, more abundant now. So people are realizing, wow, I need to really take care of myself. You know, things are really um, not as easy to, to integrate in the body, especially with the amount of stress beyond the physical right now. Just just traveling and or going places that are that are um, kind of common grounds for for people and community, where you're sitting maybe in a little tighter stress of traffic or people that might um, not be able to see each other's faces anymore. That's also yoga. So it's not just the physical, this is all yoga. <laughs> and with every, with the, with the stress of COVID, well now COVID, the masks are coming off, but mm -hmm. you know, it, it caused a lot of additional stress to not see someone's face, to not be able to see expression and to Absolutely. be, to be cloistered. Abriel, we're going to go on a break right now. We'll be back in a, yeah. in a couple of minutes and we're going to continue sure. this talking. We're going to really try to bring out your prana force yoga, what you do, your breath work. You've got a little demonstration of a, what's it called? A handy, a handy, handy, hand, handy pan? Hand pan. Hand pan. Yeah. I didn't want to mess it up, but I did. Hand pan. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Great. Thank you. All right, good. We're all clear. Back in a couple of minutes. Thank you. So Thank you. I when we come back, we might want to take the video off because your 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 reception is still a little wonky. It's a little wonky, yeah. And are you noticing um, that on your side? 
I feel a delay, definitely, but it seems when you speak, I can speak right after. So I'm not catching the delay as much from, from my audio visual at the moment. It's from your side to me because, you know, what we're yes. picking up, what we're recording. And I just okay. really want to get you in the, the best light possible. Yeah, absolutely. Shall I go grab my instrument? Yes, please. Okay, I'll come right back. Okay, thanks. So we're going to listen to a hand pan and get some sound healing this morning from Aubrey, which I'm very excited about. So I hope you too are as excited as I am about it. And I hope that my conversation didn't offend anybody. I really wanted you to, I really wanted to talk more about the kindness of how we can affect things, affect our change through kindness, acceptance, tolerance. It's so important. So um, I'm glad you tuned in. I'm glad you stuck around. I want to say thank you for that. And, um, and again, I just really, uh, you know, you know, I'm an advocate of kindness, gratitude. And so I wanted to speak my belief. So am I saying your name properly? Is it, oh, is it Abria or Abria? You got it. Abria? Yeah, Abria. Abria. A -B -R -I -A. Abria. Okay. Yeah. There's different ways you could say it. And I've, I've, you know, I've used different ways in talking about it. So. Um, definitely. Oh, um, oh Abria, I am not having a good time. Europe, they just put an accent. On the B. Yes. Abria. Abria. Can you hear me? Um, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's like the layout, whatever you just said for the last couple of minutes, I have not heard. Should we try without the video? Or... Yes, please. Let's yeah, try that. And see. Let's try turning the video off. Thank you. Yes. Okay, we have sound. Okay. All right, All right. and we are coming back in about 10 seconds here. Perfect. Thanks. Um, no. Yeah. Um, we're coming back. Do we want to do a quick sound check? We're we've, we're going right back into into the show. Sure. So sorry. Okay. No worries. <laughs> You are listening to Guided Spirit Conversations. To reach Marla Goldberg or her guest today, you're invited to call into the program at 1-888-346-9141. That's 1-888-346-9141. If you'd rather send an email, the address is guidedspiritconversations at gmail.com. Now, back to this week's program. Hello, everyone. Thank you for sticking around. If you've just tuned in, I am with Abria and Joseph. And Abria is in pursuit of living the dream and helping you to live the dream as well. And he does this through his inspirational TED Talks or his talking around the globe, his workshops, his prana force yoga, and his teacher training and his sound healing. And so I'm going to apologize again for the beginning of the show. And I hope that the fact that I wanted to talk about kindness and tolerance and acceptance was, was really understood with my conversation. But let's wel welcome back, Abria. We're having a little sound difficulty, but we're going to work through it. Are you yes. there? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So I Hello. just love your energy. It's just so chill and just so, it just reminds me of a slow rolling river. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. I appreciate your patience and um, openness to, to hear and feel what, what kind of energy we're pushing out there that we're omitting and wanting to call in. So we're grateful for the connection. It feels amazing. I have to tell you. So, absolutely. Can I ask you, um, 
with you, you know, I'm looking at your questions. It says to inquire with everyone what they are currently feeling in this day and age in their living. Could you elaborate on the question and the answer for me on this? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll just share a bit of my experience in traveling. You know, for example, I'm, I'm back here in Maui, Hawaii. I have my family, my young son, who's five months young, uh, new to this world, my partner in Bali. And I realized that, you know, in the current state of our natural birthing and the beautiful experience of living in Bali or living in Maui, as beautiful as that sounds, everything is just as real and as normal as anywhere else. Any yes. inner city, any urban town, any mountain. It's just really about what's going on between our ears and how we're integrating that practice in a way that's gentle, in a way that's forgiving, and also knowing that we're doing the best we can. So when I ask about how are people feeling in their current state of being, the pressures that are outside of just our physical needs of having our home and shelter over us and clothing on our bodies and food and healthy environment within the community and our relationships with our family, what would it, what would it look like to see what it is we wish to experience? Meaning how do we embody those practices so that despite all these beautiful locations we may or may not live in, we're all still not struggling, but we're still all experiencing challenges in our day and in our life. Yes. So I always ask that in general, because as a yoga practitioner, I could go right into yoga, Marla, honestly, and walk right out. If someone pulls out in front of me and cuts me off in an interesting or a way that feels like it's happening to the eye or to me, I begin to suffer and a middle finger could come flipping out of my hand because of a reaction of something yes. that I wasn't even really able to control in the first place, you know? You are human. I mean, regardless of what yeah. your practices and how much you try to walk your talk, we are still human beings and we still get triggered by things happening in our lives. Absolutely. So if I were to share that with you or with anyone, how are people feeling in this current state of existence, this narrative? We're doing really, really well, considering all the pressures that we're put under, despite uh, certain freedoms being shifted slightly, we're actually expanding so deeply, so widely, so high. We're covering every direction and there's no ascension and there's no descent. It, we're going every direction with our awareness. It's almost like uh, there's a um, woman by the name of Patricia Hayes and she talks about the horizontal vortex. And that's what, what you're like saying that. reminds me of. It's the horizontal yeah. vortex moving outward. Absolutely. And it's that really beautiful reflection, oftentimes, at least for me, where I go inwards. In other words, I have to really feel with what's current in me, in my environment. And despite the beautiful locations and knowing that I'm far away from my family, I know within the vision, my why is so clear to do exactly what I need to do, not, not be distracted by anything outside of my truth, which is taking care of myself first, my well-being, my mental clarity, my physical needs, in order for me to be able to come back and see myself playing with my son, my why is so clear. Yeah, and, and it's an important question, the why. Why you feel, why, you know, why you believe in something, why you do whatever it is you do. I mean, and I'm talking about this is a broad stroke question. It is, a, yeah. it's really a huge, deep question to get into. And Absolutely. so let me ask, how has traveling your world helped you create the foundation you have for your dream? I feel traveling the world allowed me to see different perspectives from different lenses from different people's culture and religions because I don't dream or play in any particular religion or denomination as a claim of this is what I am and who I am. I'm really open to the experience of knowing how it feels to be with or around a Catholic family or a Jewish family or a Muslim family or a Hindu family 
And the overall denominator is always about very similar human needs of just feeling safe, feeling connected to the family, and knowing that at the end of the day, no matter what background we may or may not have, we're still on a human level experiencing human needs of care and of forgiveness and openness to receive and accept people's gifts as they are, as opposed to wanting to change someone else's characteristics or, or, or practices. I don't want to change anyone. However, I can choose just like you or anyone else and discern who I wish to dream with. And that's what traveling has helped me experience because I, I know what feels of support for my wellness and my well-being. Um, I really can now identify whether or whether or not I wish to choose to dream with anyone at any given time because we have a choice. We do, mm -hmm. which I talk about often, the power of choice, because there is power behind the choices we make. Absolutely. I'm even going to the refrigerator, but I love how you say dream with rather than live with the people you want to dream with. It, Absolutely. it changes the whole feel. It makes it very cloud fluffy like for me, but not in a saccharine sweet way, but in a very yeah. flowing, beautiful way. Absolutely. I feel like if, if it's a bit of wordplay, and we were to forecast or dream weave, already those, those words omit a certain image that you see in your own life, like any one of the listeners see in their own experience. And that interpretation will then give someone individually a feeling of or a connection to the, what we're talking about, as opposed to urging or steering anyone in a particular direction. Everyone has free will. That's the choice that I believe you're you're sharing. But I really, I like to integrate that in my well-being in travels, so that it's smooth. So I know we've got the hand pan right behind. Yeah, I'm hearing that in the background, which is beautiful. It looks like a turtle to me. Yeah, it looks <laughs> like a turtle shell. <laughs> it mm -hmm. does. So let's talk about the hand pan because you do sound healing as well in 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 your practices. So can we yes. talk about sound healing? How it helps one to start their healing process or really go deeper into it and how you learn the hand pan and how this is now your new passion how why what 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 is it about this one particular instrument that has brought this passion to you yes thank you i being raised in the bay area grew up around a really beautiful and eclectic group of people, both in the spiritual practices of living from growing up in and around Ram Dass, Jack Cornfield, Santana, Alan Watts lived in our same town in Marin County, California, and Sausalito. Nice. Just individuals that we know of and have heard of. And why is it that in those spaces, in those pockets all around the world, in the East Coast, West Coast, all throughout you know Asia, individuals gather together and they connect through sound we connect with these concert and these musicians are sitting on stages omitting a certain frequency or energy and sharing words based on what their you know life is like and i love rhythm and i love music but i'd never played an instrument before seven years ago when i was living in netherlands in a city called Harlem. It's just outside of Amsterdam. And I was teaching yoga there and living this incredible Dutch lifestyle and European where I'm riding bikes and I'm kind of in a really very uh, beautiful lifestyle. Then I heard this music in a, in a big marketplace and I could hear the sound of these what I thought were strings, but also sounded like crystal bowls. And I started following it, just listening and keeping my, my, my eyes open for what I, I wanted to see, which I didn't know because I'd never heard the sound before, yet it was so familiar. And so as I walked and I heard the sound... I 
found this individual sitting on the ground. People were all over, crowded, watching, videotaping, taking pictures. And I came to this realization, that's me. You shared a vision that I saw of how I speak. A strong, fluid river. And that's what I felt the sound of this instrument. It was something of water, but also a percussive instrument that sounded like a drum, like a heartbeat. So I sat there and I listened and I heard this individual play and I just waited. So my time that I could speak and ask, what is it? Who are you? Where do I get one? <laughs> you know, the, the, the mental side, the cerebral side of wanting something outside of myself, like I wasn't whole, but yet I could feel so connected to something that made me feel whole. And it took 10 years later where I finally found how to acquire one because they were so rare, so expensive. Yet when we see something and know something that we're meant to experience, somehow it comes in our field. Somehow we're able to dream it real because we see it so much, not just with our eyes, but we see it with how we feel, our senses, our organs. And our feelings become very, very clear that what we wish to experience is already here. We're just filling space and sound. And how can something like a vibration just through words and an instrument invoke so much memory and beauty? It's really just allowing actually an instrument to play us. It's not like we're playing anything. It's going to do and be as it is on its own. But our combination of the human and the Kind of celestial elemental earth whether it's wood instrument or a metal instrument invokes so much feeling that all of a sudden someone would stop where they're going in their day and watch and listen and feel that to me is what this traveling lifestyle what this really listening and slowing down from the rush of how we've been programmed to do so much has allowed me to go into more inner work, which has allowed me to expand, not higher or lower, but just with what I can do, which is the most important thing in our lives. Not what we cannot, because that does not exist yet. Until we have a practice of sound. In other words, how do we vibrate the images in the mind that invoke us memories to be embodied of that as we're all working through different archetypes, whether male or female or both. That's so true. That's that's a, that's a different way to play in this dream, right? Or this illusion or reality. Yes, it's, it's, it's so, so true. And it's pulling these two together, like you were talking about the vibration, the sound with the human, it, do, it makes a huge difference. I mean, when you were playing, what I, I was, what was evoking in me was this, this, heart chakra opening and, and I was feeling just so much love coming out and then it stopped and then it's sort of like where's all that beauty <laughs> it was so lovely absolutely and isn't it interesting when we when when I first asked that similar question when he stopped or when someone would stop playing it was almost this oh why are you stopping playing like I'm not feeling it anymore 
But the reality was I am. It's what wants me to continue hearing it and show me how much it actually is coming through me, that familiarity. So then comes the idea of the actualizing something, right? When we talk about dream it real, or if someone looks at or listens to the TED talk I did in Harlem when I was living there, um, I, I would then start to figure out, you know, uh, sharing in front of hundreds of people on a stage what it's like to live your dreams is really just based on activating one's senses in what we know to be our reality. What we see is what we think and know is our reality, what we smell and taste and touch and hear. But hearing is not just with the ears, even though those are one of our sensory organs. Hearing is with our entire embodiment of all of our cells in, in, in our body. So it's, you can hear with your heart. You can hear with your stomach. Do we listen to those things? Do we believe that that gut feeling is not a vibration? Because it is. It's whether the mind, logical, cerebral, comes in and says, nope. I'm going to talk you out of this situation when the gut saying, don't do that. Right. Yeah. So interesting. It's a, it's a really um, way of acceptance of our organs that have been in, integrated into us that we have been conditioned to stop believing. It's so true. You know what? We need to take another break. Abriel, hang on. Yeah. We'll be right back everybody with more of Aubrey and Joseph and his beautiful hand pan and this amazing conversation. So stay tuned. Okay, good segment. All clear. Back in about two. Thank you. So, Abia, just I want to inform you when we come back, we're going to talk about the uh, charity. We do the charity shout out, and then yes. we can finish the conversation. And then around three minutes to close, then I'll start doing all my thank yous. But look, yes. my absolute hip. I love Bali. I love the people. Yes. There's That's a really... feeling there that you just don't get anywhere else. It's true. You know, I've been to a lot of Asian countries as my, my mother's from the Philippines and I've been to the Philippines and I've been to India and I've been to um, Thailand a lot and China. And what I found with Bali is it's a bit of a mix. Mm -hmm. um, and it's got the Hindu, it's got the Muslim and it's got the culture of really, really um, integrated hundreds and hundreds of years of prayer and practices so i'd love to touch on a little bit of that because that's something that's if you saw five prayer ceremonies a day when you're just driving from work from a to b and you see that in all the other homes how can you not drop in i love their morning well they do it twice a day where they go to ganesh and they go and they bring mm -hmm. offerings and they have their yes beginning of the day offerings and their end of the day offerings. And I love mm -hmm. the fact that they live so strongly in tradition and ceremony. Mm -hmm. That's, that's it. Yeah. And, you know, they're open to other things and they're just such gentle people. They really are. They're really genuinely kind. Yeah. I mean, like the first thing that they would be is kind. Nothing, nothing, despite having a challenging day, what, in my mind, what a challenging day might be, that would be not even on their radar because they're not wasting it on that. They're in some other frequency based on a rhythm and a, and a vortex on that ley line of that culture and, and those people's way of being brought to this existence um, from, from the moon cycles and the prayers and not bringing their babies onto the earth to touch the ground after, after until three, three months or so. Little things like this that are, wow, that, that's really a, a nice like way of being because it gives the baby time to come into the body. I just didn't know these things, you know, and, until I uh, obviously learned over being there for many years and listening and watching. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but we are coming back. No problem. Perfect. Thank yes. you. You are listening to Guided Spirit Conversations. To reach Marla Goldberg or her guest today, you're invited to call into the program at 1-888-346-9141. That's 1-888-346-9141. If you'd rather send an email, the address is guidedspiritconversations at gmail.com. Now, back to this week's program. Hello, everyone. Thank you for sticking around. 
I'm here with Avria Joseph. We're talking about his handy pan, his hand pan music, his sound healing. We're talking about yoga and how yoga really helps one in the flow of their life. And it really um, works at bringing a different perspective into life as well. So let's welcome Abria back. Hello. Thank you so much. Thank yes. Thank you. So it's charity shout out time. So what I do now is I like to talk about the charity of choice for my guests to bring to highlight and bring or spotlight uh, a different charity for them, a different something for mm -hmm. them to look into. And you had two, you had Surf Rider Foundation and the Bali community to support the education of one time use plastics so we can prevent plastics from washing into the oceans, which yes. is I know it's it's prevalent in Bali. I mean, I get the stuff that washes up is amazing. But I mean, so it's sort of surprising, but, but, it, but everywhere that there's water in the world where they have beaches, plastic wear washes up because people just yes. are careless about. Absolutely. So I want to talk about your passions and, and of charity when you could talk about which one you want or both. Absolutely. Well, I can touch on both um, just because part of where we feel my partner and I and our community that's currently in Bali um, can be of benefit is education. And through that education is through their children. And through that um, kind of medium of their children is going back to the root of um, how we've all been raised with a certain way of, you know, not really knowing what we're buying off the shelf and where it will go back into the earth, into mother nature. So this is important because, you know, culturally, the Balinese being more of a tribal people yes. um, would wrap and make a lot of their foods in uh, like a banana leaf. You know, yes. you'd have a sweet rice and then it would be in a banana leaf. And then when you finish that little snack, what would you do with that palm leaf? Well, you could do whatever you want with it. It can literally drop on the ground. It could be on the road and eventually it'll deteriorate. Right. to the point where it'll go back into the earth now culturally as, as as things have evolved and there's more products and things being made Balinese still make these same prayers and these same habits of having snacks and treats and you know they're marketed just like the same way as any other culture to ha to buy things and um with that they, they're not thinking and they pass it on through generational obviously um, where a parent will do something and eat something and then they'll just drop it on the ground thinking again that it might it'll it'll just make it to where it's meant to be as opposed to just putting it in the trash and or having something made with um, a natural product that can burn or break into the earth you know in a, in a substantial amount of time it's not going to take thousands of years like plastic might right so what we did is um we we just found that habit happening a lot through all the different villages and it was definitely something that's influenced through western peoples you know from the dutch and the portuguese and the whoever that fled through indonesian islands kind of you know reaching for natural sources and so that so that there'd be um, a way to to bring in you know a european culture and and they they don't mean to do any of those things but it just happens so as an expat that's living there and being blessed to be on the land, we've come together and realized, let's bring awareness around this because when we're in the water and we're paddling out there to enjoy nature and swim in the sea and you take a, a big paddle of water to kind of go in a direction and you grab a bunch of plastic in your hand, it's, it's very uncomfortable. It's almost like suffocating or there's a bag over over your head it's you don't you can't breathe you can't really go in the direction of what you want and you don't want to leave that plastic there so you know we're we're finding a way with what we're sharing um because there's also obviously a lot of Balinese that also surf um how to support them and, and share that these things start from from the mountains and from the rivers that lead to the seas so that it's not being eaten by fish and and um, other sea life that we need to to keep the oceans clean and take care of us all as as a race as you know a lot of the oxygen that comes to the world is not just from 
Amazon. It comes from coral reefs and it comes from the ocean. Yes. Uh, that breathes us so, so, so well, you know, and, and that water element is also a big factor for us to have clean water. So those are things that we're, we're supporting that we would love to donate towards to, which is we're doing this, this Bali um, kind of education refuge. And we're sharing with people how to reach us through, you know, Facebook groups. And one of them is called the Wave Movement Collective. It's um, all about getting on this wave and using that analogy of we're on this wave together of life and, and both the Balinese and expats and we can all take more responsibility. And I think that's the key. And um, would love to share that with you all. Thank you so much. <coughs> Excuse me. Um... As, as Bali, and I, sh I shared with you, is, is one of my heart-centered spots where I, I, could just, I could just go there and escape life. It's just, or live a different kind of life. It's, it's, it's true. If anybody has not been to Bali, which I know a lot of people haven't, it's, a, it's, a, it's an experience that I feel many will be able to um, gain a lot from. Absolutely. Yeah, just seeing the, the culture there is really such a lesson. It, it truly is. It really is. Um, I want to get as something, you know, whatever you want. I know you came in late to the show. There's so much I know you have to offer. Um, as we're winding up the show, what, what would you like to share with everybody? What would you like them to know about you, your practice, prana yoga, prana force mm -hmm. yoga, whatever it might be? This is a great time to share. And then where to get a hand, a hand pan. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I feel like my my clearest channel and offering is to, in one of the questions that we had spoke a little bit on, was just to just acknowledge where we are currently, and and really come into a deep reflection of what we do have, and really consider that more than than anything that we do not have yet. I don't have money. I don't have this. This is a tough time. You know, but there's a lot of things that we do have within our physical wellness that we can walk with our own two feet, that we can see with our own two eyes, because not everyone can do that, you know? Correct. And traveling internationally has really helped me see what it is that I, I, I miss, what I'm not taking advantage of, of, of the gifts that I do have. And that's what I would love to share with people as just a soft reminder, as a kind and gentle way of, of being, you know, and... Because of my lifestyle and what I share, for example, I was just in Maui. Short story, a friend invited me to come and host a private event. That private event um, in a time that I really needed to be focused where I was, right? Because I know, like I shared, my vision is to get back to my family and do what I need to do. In other words, to secure and make sure financially, economically, and everything that we're okay. Because it wasn't our plan to be back in Bali to live this beautiful lifestyle. That's why I said that in the beginning, beginning, which is just because we're in a beautiful place doesn't mean that it's easy. Right. Everywhere has its stuff. But can I take advantage of what I do have? That changes my perspective because then I'm going to look for the things that I'm grateful for as opposed to the things that I don't have, which aren't in my field yet. And so that along with, you know, the lifestyle about the hand pans, what I wish for people to remember is to simply acknowledge what you do have and with the senses that you do know to be real because if something's being projected onto us it is not our responsibility as sovereign beings to accept anything that we don't resonate with and that's got to be our truth and not to forget that would mean we have to see our vision so clearly that despite when the rain pours down and all the windshield wipers are on and you can't see out the window are you going to stop from going home to see no. your family you're just going to pull over to the side of the road and say, you know what? This is too much. I can't see out of the windows. It's dumping. I'm never going to make it home. No, of course not. We're going to wait it out. <laughs> We're going to pull over because we can't see and we can't really go any much faster than we are. And now I realize what I do have. And that's my skills of awareness, my patience. So I'm not talking about yoga and getting people to stretch in a hot room in a bathing suit. No, I'm talking about just dropping in, realizing what we do have. Stay focused on that and don't be steered by anyone. We're sovereign in that way. And we have to claim that um, a practice. That's, that's yoga. 
It's so true. We're running out of time. I've got to say thank you, Abria. I love thank what you. you're saying because you're closing the show with what I was trying to convey when I was on by myself before you got yes. on. So Absolutely. I mean, it's about choice. It's about how you handle it. You've said it beautifully. Thank you so much. Everyone out there, please check out pranaforceyoga.com. Um, again, yes. thank you. Thank you. Thank Happy you. Happy to share more. The show. Anytime. Thank and, you. And then I want to thank yeah. everyone at Voice America for getting the show up and running. Bridget, my right arm, my left arm. Thank you. And to you, the listening audience, Amazing. I want to say thank you for taking the time out of your life to participate in this, in this podcast. This was mm -hmm. created with you in mind. And I do this with a passion to bring you wonderful people like Abria and his, his focus, his vision, his, his dream life, and how you too can live a dream life. So please check him out. Check me out at Marla Goldberg with two rs.com. And until next week, as always, I send you love. I send you blessings and I send you gratitude. Know that you're loved and know that I am grateful that you're in my life in whatever capacity you're in it. Till the next time, stay well and have the most amazing Memorial Day weekend. And please, again, be safe. Take care.